Tony from Hurricane Wind Power here, and uh, today I'm going to do some show and tell. I was asked to do some show and tell of some different products and things. The last video was more technical in nature. So um, we're going to go back to the technical side, but do some show and tell so you understand the difference between some of the products that we have and are offering. So the first thing I want to show you is a nice piece that we have for sale. This is our Vector um, wind turbine body mount. This is a one piece unibody piece and we've made this really simple to install. So um, here we go. You put this guy on here and that's that, okay? Um, I want to bring in and let's look at some of the fine attention to detail in the craftsmanship powder coated wrench zinc uh, construction heavy tubular construction so you don't get that wobbling from side to side from some of the press metal things um, that we see on the market this is what we thought it took to make a nice wind turbine so that's what we've done we've got the opposing tail wing structure that just bolts up on either side easy like sunday morning one on one side, one on the other side, that's it. So um, after that, we've got our white light and PMA. We will put these up for sale for people that have bought our white light and PMAs in the past and they want the blade sets and they want the full wind turbine kit. So I'm offering these. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to that product. And um, so this guy just fits right in here like so. And you've got the bolt holes. You've got rods that go through. We've got a tapered shaft on this alternator, which is my preferred method to keep the blades from flying off. Maybe some of you have seen videos on YouTube with people having problems with the shaft flying off of the PMAs. Um, this is this is this is what we do. Um, the tapered shaft, once that is bolted down, it's retained, and it about takes a crowbar to get it off. Um, a lot of you out there that are mechanics know. How that works you know how morris taper works and that's the tapered shaft going back to power production on our last video we showed a couple blades and um i just want to talk a little bit about the alternators and the blades and how the blade sets work so we've got a few stators and things on the table so this goes back to several years ago this is an original Delco 12SI that's been rewound for wind. We've showed that in comparison. If you look at the weight on the alternators, it's a good gauge if you can't tell. But here is the stator from the White Lightning com uh, compared to that. For comparison with that, this is the big 2KW. Um, this is the big 2KW alternator and blade set that uh, we showed so um got some comments and actually somebody made a video talking about um, liking the smaller blade so you have to understand that if you put if we took our 450 watt blade set and turn up put on that it probably would not turn that so your blade set has to be matched up with the alternator um, that is true in and of the bearing sets, you know, if you have a small bearing, and of course, if you put a giant blade set on a small PMA, PMG, whatever, whatever you call it, you know, something that weighs 10 or 12 pounds, that's going to be a disaster. So don't, don't do that. The, um, the stator in these things, um, they're wound with different gauges of wire. So the thinner wire um, that you have in, in a stator, the higher voltage that you get with lower RPMs, 
the thicker the wire, uh, you have to turn the thing faster, but you, um, you can get more current like that. So when you see 12, 24, 48, 110 volt, it is usually just saying that that's what we need at a decent RPM, say 150 RPM, to reach a cut-in speed, which just means the voltage at which you start producing power. So um, again, here is something that I've got on the table today. Let me just move something out of the way for a minute. Uh, give me just a second here. This is, uh, this is an axial stator mold. Okay, so, you know, when you're, this is one coil. This is one coil of an axial stator mold. This one coil is in comparison size to that. You've got nine of those. Um, this is what a finished stator looks like in one of those. So again, and this is what the bearing hub, you know, tapered bearing, these bigger, bigger turbine, bigger blades, bigger bearings, you know. So the, my point is to all this is the blade set needs to be matched with what you're trying to do. Large blade set, small PMA, you're probably, when, when you have a smaller diameter um, stator and rotor. you got two pieces. you got a magnetic rotor that fits in here and you got a copper stator and you have a magnet going around and that's that's how that works. So the faster that the magnet travels by the coil, um, the better you know the better off you are. So a smaller my point is the smaller stators and the smaller magnets generally you have to, have higher RPM. So of course a smaller blade with a smaller turbine is going to help you reach the cut-in point faster. So to get into and address another point, if you have a smaller wind turbine and you want to contact us and buy a larger blade hoping to get better performance out of it, those don't really match up. So that's probably not going to be the answer to uh, whatever problem you may have. So um, this stator, you know, this is the stator. You have magnet plates that go on the front and they go on the back. And, you know, if you can tell the diameter, you know, we put this little guy in here. Um, the diameter that you have of the magnet going past the field coil it's going to take higher RPM to get that speed. Just like a larger bicycle wheel, you go faster. You've got a rotor out here that the, um, the magnet is just farther away. And with slower, with slower um, RPM, you have a faster speed past the coil. And that is one of the reasons that this type of stator or you know, alternator is really efficient. A lot of people like those. They build them themselves or order them for other people. Um, I, again, I, I like those. Outside of that, what you see here with our white lightning um, PMA, what you have is you have a lot of area in which magnet comes in contact with the copper. So again, you know, it if you've got something and you see the rotor and the magnets on this guy are maybe an inch, you know, an inch wide, I didn't, I didn't pick up a rotor and bring it in with me, but I have videos where I pulled the rotor out before. And when you stick that in here, you can see the laminations. So you have a large area inside where, um, you know, you, you, you've got more magnet in, in touch with more copper and um, you know you get more power out. People have posted this 12 and 24 volt you know I think maybe some of the 48 volt stuff uh, on YouTube and I you know I've seen customer videos it's out there and I mean it's 12 volts 24 volts this thing punches out 40 to 60 amps in the NRE rated wind speed of 24.6 miles an hour. 
So just to address the point that someone said that I didn't talk about wind speed last time, it is all relative um, to the wind speed. Small blades turn faster, large blades turn slower, but you also have to have torque. If you don't have torque, if you don't have cut in, you don't have cut in RPM on whatever you're flying, whether it's made on a platform more like this, like this, like that. If you don't exceed the cut in voltage, unless you're using a boost controller, you don't get anything. So what we like to do is when possible, run a higher voltage stator, use that midnight classic controller that I had on the, um, on the table the last time and write a wind track controller on there. And it does a very good job of harvesting power. And it also, um, it, it, it's just better for the turbine in, ter in terms of controlling it. So this video is just for show and tell. Um, there's our, that's our bracket on our vector wind turbine. And, you know, I just, I don't know if I want to go to the ER today, but I mean, you know, this guy, you know, I weigh enough to where I could about hang a Jeep on the backside of this bracket. It doesn't move. Um, here's our, here's our welds. You know, this is, um. Uh, this bracket is made in the United States, heavy steel. Um, it's not cheap stuff, you know. It's um, well-built stuff. And um, I hope this brings some clarity to what we're talking about in terms of blade speed, what it takes to make power with the wind, and uh, wind speed. So that's not to say that if you are in an area where you have 50 miles an hour worth of wind that you can't get high power output out of your smaller wind turbines because you know you, you can but as I said in the last video and I'm gonna say it again I encourage you to I'm gonna drop another link to three different calculators if you're looking and you're confused take the wind speed drop it into the calculator Take the blade diameter, take how many blades, and it will tell you within 10% plus or minus about what power you can expect to get out of your wind turbine. Um, I hope this has clarified some things. This was a show and tell video. I was asked to do that by a subscriber that um, didn't want all the technical mumbo jumbo. This is something that we'll go into at a later date this is a nice coil that has been wound off of our coil winder for the axial stuff so i mean that's that's gonna that's gonna bring positive things but you know until we till we get that stuff till we test it for a long time until we feel comfortable dropping that on the commercial market you know it's it's going to stay in my shop where it is so we're in the process of testing some things that we build you'll see that later but you know for right now let's just remember this is the this is the size stator that you have in a small wind turbine this is compared to the one in this wind turbine and the 2kw over here um you know i hope you can get some appreciation uh, this this unit weighs 80 pounds. This generator weighs 80 pounds. Um, small blades won't turn that, period, end of story. Um, so, you know, buying a great big generator, you put some small blades on it, you're gonna get small power. If you buy a small generator and you put big blades, you're not gonna reach a cut-in point. You're not gonna get any power. You have to match up your wind turbine blade set with your wind turbine. They have to go together. Um, it's not really something that you can do as an afterthought. And finally, I would just say, in all my years of running this, on the blade sets that we provide, we have never had one of these burn up. And that goes back to this blade. You know, if you take a five horsepower motor and you drive one of these guys with it, or any, you know, you, you start throwing 20, 
20 horsepower into a uh, horsepower two motor or generator, you know, it's bad things are going to happen. Um, these generators are sealed. These generators are engineered to do what they're engineered to do with the blade diameter that will put in a horse to a horse and a half, you know, in, in good wind. And then on our power curves, you see they go up and then they come back down because the blades dynamic blade break. They let the power off from the blade set and they save your stator core. No furrow needed. So, um, for now, Tony from Hurricane Wind Power signing off. And until next time, I hope this sheds some more light on what can be a confusing subject of how to make power with the wind. Thank you.